Hello everyone! In today's video I wanted to talk about Hiram Verdan. The reason why I wanted to talk about this individual is the contribution he did in the sort of military organization of the Union Army during the American Civil War. In a way, he kind of set up the first sort of special forces regiment or unit in that war, and I feel like his importance and his effect on that conflict, on that war, was very much important. And I wanted to do a video today talking about Hiram Burdan. Born in Phelps, a small town in Ontario County, New York, Burdan was a mechanical engineer, inventor, and expert marksman. Hiram Burdan was no novice when it came to firearms and ballistics. A champion sharpshooter, his development of improved musket balls, fuse timers, shrapnel shells, range finders, and patent for repeating rifles contributed significantly to the evolution of more of efficient weapons. But his greatest design was the formation of what I stated in the beginning of an elite unit of expert sharpshooters for the Union Army during the Civil War. Like I stated, it was almost like the first uh, a special forces unit or first sniper unit used effectively to attack the Confederate forces during the war. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Burdan, a wealthy entrepreneur with influential political and industrial connections, presented his proposal for the organization of a top-notch sharpshooter regiment to President Abraham Lincoln and wrote letters to members of the War Department. This would later lead to the formation of the 1st and 2nd Sharpshooters Regiments. Despite his lack of military experience, on June 15, 1861, he received permission to recruit from the loyal states of the Union. Though slow to start, a number of recruitment posters pitching the unique roles of sharpshooters, some offering bounties, resulted in an overflow of volunteers. To ensure that only the finest marksmen were selected, Burdan set high criteria for acceptance. Only those men who could make a 10 consecutive shots within 5 inches of a bullseye at a 600 feet distance would be allowed to join his elite regiment. Soon, newspapers featured stories about the sharpshooter's exceptional skills. Though committed and driven, one of his downsides was that Ber Hiram Bernan lack of military leadership experience and his arrogance created some animosity between uh, many of his subordinates. Having to admit to himself that he had not that much of experience when it came to military tactical tra uh, training and command, Hiram Bernan requested and received the assistance of Lieutenant Colonel Frederick Mears, a seasoned officer and drill master who provided the sharpshooters with basic training and skirmishing, scouting, and guard duty skills, which were much needed. In September of 1861, at Camp of Instruction in Washington, D.C., representatives from several firearms companies demonstrated their respective breech loader rifles, hoping to cement contracts for large sales of their weapons. Private Truman Head of, Co of Company C, 1st Sharpshooter Regiment, had purchased his own Sharps 1859 model rifle, a 52 caliber single trigger weapon with a saber bayonet. Introduced into service in 1850, the Sharps rifle had an effective range of 300 yards. Not only was the rifle renowned for its range and accuracy, its fast breech loading design meant that a proficient rifleman could fire up to 10 rounds per minute. Hiram Burdan requested a sample from the Sharps factory in September of 1861 and subsequently placed a requisition for a thousand rifles with modifications. The new Sharps would be equipped with angular bayonets, double set triggers, and rear sights adjusted to 900 yards. On the battlefield, the sharpshooters wore distinctive hunter green wool uniforms with green felt caps and leather leggings which served as camouflage. Gray overcoats and hats to blend in with the winter's backdrop were soon discarded unless the sharpshooters were to be confused for confederate soldiers. Instead of forming traditional battle lines, they fought as skirmishers, spreading themselves out 
making them tougher targets for the enemy to fire at. And they also adopted guerrilla style tactics that proved both effective and deadly. The sharpshooters saw their first action on April 5th, 1862 during the Pen Peninsula Campaign when they picked off artillerymen manning Confederate batteries one by one during the Siege of Yorktown. Verdant sharpshooters helped fight several rear guard actions during the Union's retreat at the Battle of Malvern Hill. While the Peninsula Campaign ended in a humiliating Union withdrawal, the men in green quickly established themselves as an elite unit of the, uh, the Union Army. They would continue to serve with distinction during the bloodiest battles of the war, which included the Second Battle of the Bull Run, the Battle of Antietam, Battle of Fredericksburg, and the Battle of Chancellorsville. In July 1863, they intercepted the rebels at a small farming town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. In one of history's biggest and bloodiest battles ever fought on American soil. At Devil's Den and the Peach Orchard, their action significantly delayed the Confederate assault, giving vital time for Union tro troops to organize defenses on the high ground outside of the town. At Seminary Ridge, the 1st Sharpshooter Regiment, supported by 200 troops of the 3rd Marine Infantry, held off an entire Confederate brigade. The 1st and 2nd U.S. Sharpshooter Re Regiments also took part in the most ruthless battles of the Overland Campaign. The Battle of the Wilderness, Spotsylvania Courthouse, and the Battle of Cold Harbor. On June 9, 1864, Union troops laid siege to the rebels at Petersburg, Virginia. Verdant's sharpshooters again distinguished themselves, but it would be their final engagement of the war. With all their actions completed and the engagements over and the war coming to an end, Verdant resigned his commission on January 2, 1864, and returned to his career as an engineer and inventor. On December 8, 1868, President Andrew Johnson nominated Verdan for appointment to the brevet grade of Brigadier General of Volunteers to rank from March 13, 1865 for the Battle of Chancellorville, at which he led a brigade, and the United States Senate confirmed the appointment on February 16, 1869. Although President Johnson also nominated Burdan for an appointment uh, to the brevet grade of Major General of Volunteers to rank from the same date for his services at the Battle of Gettysburg, in which he also led a brigade, the United States Senate did not confirm this specific appointment though. Despite the lack of necessary Senate confirmation of the appointment to make it official, Many services referred to Burdan as a brevet major general, and even his gravestone in Arlington National Cemetery indicates he was a brevet major general. Burdan subsequently invented numerous engines of war, including a twin-screw submarine gunboat, a torpedo boat for evading torpedo nets, a long-distance rangefinder, and a distance fuse for shrapnel. Verdan, though, died unexpectedly on March 31st, 1893, and was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video where I covered Hiram Burdan, sort of uh, a lot of elements of the important elements basically of his life, and talk about his career in the military, his short career, and the fact that his unit contributed a lot in the Union forces. In the end, I think Hiram Burdan in kind of developing this kind of unit and really adopting advanced technology for that time is quite revolutionary in the sense of that what they did was really be able to make this small unit a completely devastating force. And I really like the story of Hiram Burdan. So let me know in the comment section down below if I missed out on some important information. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell you guys is that this is the site that I use to get much of my information on about Hiram Burdan, and I'll link the site in the description below.
So thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you guys uh, liking my video. I would appreciate if you guys subscribe to my channel. Thanks anyway. And like always, have a wonderful day.